So we're going to do the pillowcase today. I already have my fabric cut. I am using uh, the office fabric that we have at our shop. And um, we have this, it's $21.98 because of course it's licensed. And I don't know how many of you love the office. I know it has a huge following. Is that upside down? Oh, I actually got it right this time. I know that it has a huge following. I do not like it. I wish I did, uh, but I don't. But my kids adore it. So this one is for my little Cooper's stocking. And he's, no, he's not little. He's like 6'4", but whatever. He's my baby, and I'm going to do this up for him. <clears throat> I don't know about any of you, but I have children that are very particular about their pillowcases. And my oldest son will use a pillowcase just like his mother until it is ragged. So... Um, I'm, I'm trying to convince Porter that he needs a new one at this point. Anyway, so the fabrics are available at the shop and I don't know how old this video will be, but right now they're available while I'm, while I'm doing this now. Um, I've picked the two of them out, the blue, because we just, we have the two pieces in the office and I have just grabbed a simple black color works from Northcott to, um, to just divide your cuff from your main body. And, um, keeps everything together. So this, uh, this quilt, th this, it's not a tricky technique. It's a beautiful technique. I don't know who thought of it, but they are a freaking genius. Um, we call it the hot dog method. Uh, there's other people that call it the burrito method. Either way, you'll see why it's called that. I still, after making, oh, I've probably made about 50 of these. We do these, uh, as a, a charity as well, uh, I don't want to call it charity, but they go, they conquer cancer. Uh, they make pillowcases for the kids who go through their chemo treatments and they get to pick out a new pillowcase when they come in for their pillows. And that's pretty, it's pretty cool. But uh, a lot of guilds will um, do the sewing for those and and contribute those. It's, it's, a, it's very rewarding to do that. So if you have a chance, go on to the Conquer Cancer website. It's uh, C-O-N-K-E-R-R. Uh, cancer. Uh, it's not spelled the way you're used to. I honestly, I couldn't decide which way my little peoples were going to face. So I pre-pressed my fabrics. I think maybe we'll just, we'll have them facing this way. We'll try and get him facing the correct way. Once you've made this a couple times, you'll realize hey, if you make a mistake, it's a really quick and easy thing to uh, unpick. We're going to start with the cuff first. And uh, like I said, I'd already pressed it, but this has a bit of a wow in it now because of the way I cut it, which is my bad. But we're going to make it work because I am not recutting. And I'm going to sew my little strip here, my separation piece, onto the length of this. AJ, since that's a color that's the same on both sides, the little divider piece is would that be right sides together okay yes two good right point. sides facing up yes it doesn't matter with this or if you're using a batik it doesn't matter if you're using a homespun doesn't matter because they're same, both sides are the same color but in this particular case you're absolutely correct Deb. It, this would be sewn right sides together okay good point so no i'm not pinning this is a simple case of not pinning this one. We're just going to go along. And this is where I really like making the videos because instead of babbling, um, Deb just uh, makes it so that I'm already finished sewing. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over to my little... And I'm just going to relax the thread. And we're pressing, not ironing. What you doing? And again, remember I'm always saying, <clears throat> don't stretch it. Give it a little finger press before you put your fab, before you put your iron on it. Little finger press, you put it in place. Finger press. Finger press. Mm 
Okay. Now, if you're, if you're anal like me, and I am with my sewing, I like to run my, if you don't have one of these, you need one. Watch our 12 days of Christmas. It'll be on there because they're amazing. It's a much more diffuse spray than what comes out of the actual best press bottle. You use 30% less of your best press, but still get the same effect. And, um, it's actually lighter in your hand. It's easier to squeeze if you have problems with fibromyalgia or anything like that. And if you're doing a larger area, it actually has a neat end spray. If you pull it all the way, it gives a larger, wider spray and it does it without you having to hold on to it. It's pretty epic. Okay, so now we have this sewn together and we're going to lay it on our ironing board. Some of y'all might have longer ironing boards than I do, but I have a neat ironing board that has storage underneath it that back in the olden days I got at the old shop. So it's pretty cool. So this, this, this here is kind of not, it's not directional dude. Shmarmy dude here is facing both ways. So we're going to, um, we're going to not worry about our direction as much. And I'm going to lay this face down on here. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to do this little kind of movement here. Okay. So we're going to drape it like so. And so what you want to think of, you want to think of this piece of fabric almost like the hot dog, because now we're going to take this and we're going to bring it up. And we're going to throw, so we're going to sew through and I'm going to change my glasses because my eyes are really tired today. There we go. Oh, and these are really dirty. And we're now going to sew through all three of these seams. I'm going to do that again to show you what I did one more time because it's the key to this pillowcase. It's the key to turning the seams for the cuff inside. So we're going to lay this face down on here on our cuff. Don't worry about completely matching it up yet because we're going to have time to do that. And we're going to pick it up from the bottom. And we're going to just accordion fold it into the center like that, kind of creating our little wiener. Then we're going to pull this piece up that we've left lying there and we're going to bring it up. Now what that's going to leave us with is three layers. This piece here that we laid face down, the piece that we also, sorry, we didn't lay that face down, we laid it face up. Then the piece that we laid down on it, the long piece, and then the bottom of the cuff are all coming up. And we're going to, we're going to make them fit each other exactly and we're going to pin yes we are going to pin here is a pinning moment my little wenches this is a pinning moment you do not want to undertake this without pinning okay it's all about and you have to be careful, I assume, that you're just doing the three and not getting any of the waffled fabric in there, right? Well, you do. You Like, this really needs to stay as a wiener in here. Uh, your chances of sewing it in are slim, but it, I'm sure it's been done by many of a many of us trying to do this quickly or, or whatever. And just, you know, what I do with this one, because it's three layers, I don't go along at long distances. I actually over pin this one. I find it, I find it easier on me and I can enjoy the sewing process and just sewing rather than stopping constantly when it's actually pinned together in a much more, um, exact way. Okay. Cause sometimes you'll find, you know, things pull apart a little bit and you will straighten them up as you go. But if you do your very best to keep them. So to the pillowcase for me, sometimes I find my cutting may be a little bit off just because of the sizing of what you're cutting. I just trim it off at the end 
It is not, this is not a quilt. And although it requires you to stick with your quarter inch and in this particular case, a half inch seam at one point, um, see this little end? I knew that was going to happen because of the fabric. Once I'd ironed it out, I found a wrinkle. And so I'm going to just trim it later after I've sewn this. All right. So this is my hot dog or my burrito and I must sew it now. And I'm going to put it over my shoulder because I find it drags here and this is easier. Now, because you've got stuff in here, it's really easy for this to pull away. So just keep tidying it up. And again, we go back to this is a process. It's a journey. It's not all about a finish line. Okay. And your work will reflect that. Put the music on. Enjoy what you're doing. Throw on your Netflix. Have a giggle. Okay. Perfect. Now, this is one of my favorite parts what we're going to do right now. Okay. Put all our pins out. And I'm going to wait to trim that because I'm not going to trim it like that. That would be wrong. I'm going to throw a bunch of fabric on the floor. Okay. I've been doing so many damn projects with you guys that I haven't got them finished. So it's driving me nuts. And then this one decides to say to me today, you get the quilt finished? I don't have the freaking quilt finish. Okay. So uh, you're going to take our wiener out of, oh, hang on though. I want to trim my threads because they're going to bother me. There we go. Okay. So our wiener, which was the inside piece in the fat in here, and I'm going to start to pull it out. Okay. It's, uh, just be patient. Don't yank. Don't rife. Just do it nice and slowly. You'll get it. It'll come. Let's keep pulling. It's like, it's like pulling a rabbit out of the hat, only you're pulling a pillowcase out. I think it's just the coolest technique ever. It really is. Right? That's so cool. And you'd say, okay, well, I can just sew them together. Yes, but wait for it. <laughs> Look, your seam is not on the outside. There's no outside seam. Not even a little bit. It's all your seam is in here. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. Okay. So I started doing this thing. So I'm going to just give this a little bit of a press. A lot of a press, actually. We're going to press the crap out of it is what we're going to do. So we just head down here. And now what I want you to remember is you are, I put my hand in here and I pull up because I want to start it off right. And the reason is because I want it pulled up from back here and here. So it's kind of hard to get that started correctly. Okay, so we're going to do that and we're going to put our iron down. And then what I always do when I'm going along now, I don't sew up, I don't iron this top crease yet. I just pull along underneath the bottom and I give this a little press. And you want to remember that this guy also is pressed. So you don't want to interfere with that seam. You want to make sure you're still going, you're keeping it lying flat, but you are pulling up from the back in order to get that seam. And so I'm going to show you from the back what I'm talking about. You want this to be going up as well so that you're not, it's not getting pressed too far down. So you can see if we didn't pull it up, what would happen, right? So we're going to, we pull it up from the back as well. And that, and I do that first before I ever make the crease up here. I pull along and clean off my shit. There we go. Pull along. Okay, so now I'm going to give this 
a wee bit of a press. Again, I'm not actually really pulling on my fabric. I'm just making sure that it's lying the right way. I can, that I can feel that there's no bumps under there. Just while I'm doing this part that we've already done, we'll give that a little bit of a best press before I move down a little bit. So, Cause I'm telling you, I don't know if you guys had a Nana that did this, but my Nana ironed the pillowcases. Uh, that was always freshly pressed. I And I still do it. So the Christmas pillowcases are coming out. They're downstairs. And last night the kids were like, oh, can we put the Christmas? No, because I haven't pressed them yet. They're put away clean. But they need a nice pressing because there's nothing. Ugh, hate a wrinkled pillowcase. Nasty. Okay. Bob's your uncle. Fanny's your aunt. There's our cuff looking all beautiful and does look beautiful. So what I am going to do, because this is, look at that. And I did know that was going to do that because of my initial pressing and cutting job. So I'm just going to give that a little trim off. Cause again, you do not need to obsess over this. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a line along that you can see how it's running along my black and then I know I've got a fairly straight bit you know and that's just going to get folded in because we're going to do two seams on this so that's not going to be an issue okay so I went and found some black thread and I'm going to do this because then I'm going to have a pillowcase not done the way I want it done so it's just not going to happen that kind of freaked me a little bit so I've moved my needle over and I can see it's going to probably go down right in about there and I'm going to use the edge of my foot to follow and um, there we go. So we're just going to go along. So another thing that this does, actually, first of all, it makes it much nicer when it comes out of the laundry because you don't have this loose cuff. And it also um, protects those seams that little bit more because it's, it's sewing them down to each other as opposed to even leaving them open on the inside of this cup. They are not gonna be open then either. So, and visually, I like the look of it. Visually, it has a much nicer look now. So basically what this does is it adds two seams to your sewing time. So I guess if you are in a huge brush, don't do this. It's not important, it's not necessary, and you won't find it in most patterns but you want that finished look. So I just want to show you, I don't know if you can see that, look how much different that looks. That actually looks so much more, I don't know what you want to call it, professional. Just, it's a finished look. Okay. And that is my one. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna quickly do the other side. Now remember, you're gonna have this big chunk of fabric, so you may wanna give it a little bit of a pumping up and you can leave it the same and you can do it the same if you fold it in. Okay, and that puppy is done now. And it has my finish the way I like it. And I'll just show you what that looks like. So much nicer it just it just i don't care who you are it's just so much nicer right okay so now our next step is now now basically we have we have a big squarish thing here so we're going to do an uncomfortable thing this is uncomfortable so uncomfortable even for me we're going to put wrong wrong sides together let me repeat that you are going to put wrong sides together wrong sides. Okay. Yes. You heard that right. It's wrong. Wrong sides together. I want to start at the top here. I want to put a pin in because we are going to pin again. I know if there's any product project that, uh, pinning is the thing you want to do. It's this one. Okay. So also you want to take, now this sometimes is a little bit, as we go along, it gets harder to go over, but it's just nice to match those up. You'll see why after you sew them together, or maybe you can already imagine why. 
but that's kind of important to do that to match those seams up. And again, overpinning, there's never really an issue with overpinning, only underpinning. I think that's actually a word for something else, an underpinning. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to get everybody in place. This I'm going to just loosely pin, not loosely, but just not as many because I can shift it as I'm going along a lot better. But I also want to make sure I end up at my corner, just like I wanted to make sure that I started at the top and made made sure that this uh, this band joined up. So I'm going to do that. Right, and I'm going to start up here. And I'm going to start up here because this this is the most important thing I want to be straight and dead on, right? Is because this is the part. It's just because you do. And I'm going to set my quarter inch seam again. And it is important for you to stick with this quarter inch seam because we're going to unstick from the quarter inch seam later. We're going to do something else. So we're going to motor along here. And I'll do it. I'm just double checking to make sure those are matched up. And I'm going to sew right off. I just find it easier to sew right off rather than trying to find it because it's not really important to find that exact. And then I can start back in. Give it a little. There we go. And then you're going to just have one on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over to my ironing board because this actually next step is where I find one of the most important things happens. And this is where, hmm, this is where the, I don't want to call it professionalism, but this is where things look their very best. Okay, so we're going to turn it inside out. Last time I was doing this, I had that cream on the back of my tattoo, and and I realized at the end I had freaking coconut oil all on the inside of the on the outside of the pillowcase from doing that. I'm a little annoyed with myself. Okay, go to your tools, grab your wooden one. This one is my favorite one for using this, and to be quite honest, if you can, try and blunt this tip. Um, I don't want this tip super sharp because I don't want it to go through my fabric. I know that sounds weird. So, and this is a new one because my old one is in the store somewhere and I don't know where. The other tool you could use is this guy. If you've got him, he's from Clover. He's a, he's, he's more expensive. He's a great one. Actually, he's great for, you know, pushing and pulling with your fabric and doing neat things with it. Um, but it's definitely an option. They also are harder to burn. So that's wonderful. So you can use one of those. Um, but for some reason for this particular job, I always like to go to my little wooden one. These guys are $4.99. I, I believe they came in at $4.99 on the website. So, um, not an, an, not an expensive tool to have, but definitely in my, in my top tools. Okay. So I'm going to go to my far corner and this is why I don't want it super pokey. Cause I just want to poke my cor that corner out a bit. This is super awkward. There's nothing graceful about this. You don't want to do this in front of an audience and have them not think you're having a seizure because it will definitely look like you're having a seizure. Okay, so all I do is I push the seam out, right? I want the seam pushed out because you know what happens when these seams curl in. So I finger press that there and I put my iron there. And then I run it a little bit farther along and I put my iron there. And I run it a little further along and I put my iron there. That's going to come around to the other side of me. And I run it, keep running it, making sure that you're running along the seam, not just along the fabric. Okay. And I keep going the one way. Sometimes you have to adjust. And sometimes you can only do small amounts at a time. I need to poke his face out. Look at that. His face is coming out. Okay. And it's actually not my best job, which I always find on video it never is, but 
it's no excuse. But you can see what I've done is I've pushed out the seam. So now it's ironed out. Okay. Now you want to go to this corner. Oh my God, I'm freaking boiling hot now. You want to go to this corner. In this particular case, I'm actually poking this man's head. I don't know whose head it is, but I'm poking somebody's head. And I'm going to do that. And so I'm repositioning. I'm kind of wearing the pillowcase. My arm is inside it. You can do whatever which way works for you. But I'm just going to run it along for a little ways. Finger press it and bring my iron over. And then I'm going to run it along a little bit more. Put my iron there. Run it a little bit more. Put my iron there. And we're just going to keep doing this to get that seam out nice and so you can see how it's come out nice and crisp, super crisp. Okay, and I'm going to reposition my arm in and push that seam out. Again, this is probably my least favorite job of this project. I don't necessarily like doing this, but the outcome is important, super important. So it's worth it. All right, and now my seam is pushed out. Like, look at it, it's pushed right out as opposed to this folding in thing that happens and it does happen, all right? So what are we gonna do now? Well, our fabric is now, it's basically, if you look at it, our fabric is now right sides together. And you think, but it's already sewn together. Yes, but what we want to do is because if we open this pillowcase up right now, you'll notice that seam is open on the right side of our fabric. Well, nobody wants that, right? This is actually the outside of my pillowcase and it ha now has an open seam. So what we're going to do is called a French seam. We've started the French seam, the first part. We don't have to pin again. Um... And we want to go and grab our pillowcase by the top again. I need a little rocket thing on the back of this. It pushes me into my sewing machine. And we're going to do the same thing all the way around. Only, and this is important, very important, we are going to work with the half inch seam. Okay, so remember told you guys about this little tool. It's either $3.99 or $4.99. I can't remember. And um, it's a great way to uh, figure out where your quarter, your half inch, quarter inch or whatever seam is, whatever you're working with. It has all of the measurements on it. So there's my half inch right there. So my half inch looks like it's all the way over here. And I'm just going to... Oh, it's pretty damn close to a half an inch. Again, there are no half inch police. It, the only reason we're doing this is we're going to enclose this seam. So, you know, as close as you can get to your half inch, again, you're not going to run out of anything. It's not going to be wrong. It's not going to be. And so we're going to. Okay, I just, I don't want any. I'm going to get thread barf here and I don't want it. So I'm starting over. Okay. What I am going to do here is I'm going to back off right off and come back on it again because well, you, that's the one seam you don't want coming apart, right? And I also want to sew into my pillow here. This is, this is a bugger to get over. So we're going to come up close to it. And you may have to pull a little bit. Everybody's machine is different. I'm gonna sew again. I'm gonna come down to the end and I'm just gonna give it a little double punch at the end here. And sew right off. Okay. And put my thread there. So what we're doing basically is we are encasing 
that quarter inch seam inside another seam. If you really want to knock yourself out, you could go along that, that seam before we turn it inside out. You could go along it with a zigzag thread. If you know, you know, I don't know. You, maybe your washing machine is hard on things or whatever, or you just want to be extra certain. You could do a zigzag all the way down the first seam just to almost uh, pseudo surge it. All right. Okay. So you can see, oh, for crying out loud, honestly, I'm dropping everything today. Um, so you can see why this is actually a quick and easy product. We're almost done. I'm just going to trim up these little buggers here that are kind of peeking out. A little bit of thread, a little bit of thread. Let's see, is there any anybody else? Oh, yes, this is our end, which was a little bit of a thread party happening, but we're all cleaned up. Okay, so we're almost done. We just have one more little bit of ironing to do. And I'll, I'm going to trim this thread here. If you don't make that a half an inch, and I used to do this, I used to be so frugal thinking that I needed my pillowcase to be that much bigger. You're wrong, and I was wrong. And you still kept your quarter inch or just a little bit more than the quarter inch, you would get this little fringing thing that happens, and you would have to go along and be pulling out all of these threads and trying to trim them up. And there's a there will be a ton of them because you wouldn't have sewn far enough away from that particular seam. And doing this, you do you do take the chance that you will also cut your fabric that you've that you've sewn. So you know, not such maybe not after you've spent that much. So now we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put our tool in our hand here, trade spots with Deb, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get that corner out, and we're going to do that awkward thing. So I'm just going to do a quick finger press, and then I'm going to bring my iron over and leave it on there. And I want to be able to see, you can hear that running along the seam there. Running along the seam. I always find this corner a little bit bumpy. It just is. If you sleep on the very corner of your pillow, I guess that'll be uncomfortable, but you know. Knowing my son, though, he would probably play, just play with that. And all we're doing is, again, if you give it this initial press, then um, you shouldn't have to do this again. It comes out of the laundry fine. It's just a little bit of an initial press to get that seam. It's it, Basically, it's teaching the seam where it's supposed to be. And we're just going to run it along here. Give it a finger press. Watch your little pause. And while you're doing it, if you want to give it a spritz of best press. Because, you know, as a gift, you want that. Okay. I'll give it a nicer press after. But basically, there we go. Could you do it with these guys facing? Yes, it's a lot more fabric, not necessary. Um, I find most people don't have a problem with the fact that it's facing that way. We've done it with border. Border prints are really cool to use as well because you can use them they'll, in either direction and they look really cute. Um, but uh, yeah, so that and uh, you want to fold that nicely to give it up as your gift. Um, you could pre-wash it if you want and then give it another iron so it's actually ready to use for the recipient. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I always like to fold my towels in three and I do the same thing with my pillowcases. And there you go. It's all ready to go. And uh, stay tuned for other videos that we'll be showing you. So um, go sew, my little sewing ninjas.